have from a colleague speech language pathologist because they are uh, quite familiar with the brain functions uh, somebody told me that the cause of stuttering has to something to do with the brain but in persons who stutter the right hemisphere is more developed than the left people stutter because the right side actually is not able to produce fluent speech first year after her graduation from the speech language pathology program and she is quite good at the neurology because it wasn't that too too many years ago that she was studying the brain and the brain functions so this is a script and just uh Det är Helena Westlund, Westlunds logopedmottagning. Jaha, um, okej, okay, it's from... Okej, okay. ja. Yeah. Uh. Yes, that's me speaking, okej. Okay. And what's your question? Aha, okej. Okay. You think that some... You are asking whether... Somebody told you that the cause of stuttering has something to do with the brain. Uh, and in persons who stutter, the right hemisphere is more developed than the left. Aha. Uh -huh. And that was, you think that people stutter because the right side actually is not able to produce fluent speech. Okay, uh, I got it. Uh, but here you see, being able to answer to the clinical questions of yours, uh, I will concentrate on those parts uh, concerning brain lateralization and activity. Um, and the, those are, you know, the so-called central theories and their clinical importance for the speech language pathologist. Uh, are you familiar with those? Yeah, okay, I got it. Uh, you see, and you read my report, yeah. And you know, in that report, you had the uh, study, the Australian study, and now for almost 30 years ago, and that was the research team that was conducting a total inventory of all research literature at the time, producing the area of study. Yeah, uh, for finding the best evidence for various aspects of the disorder, and. There was a main literature referred to, yeah, you read it in my Swedish report from 2001, uh, and that was together with some additional papers. Yeah, and I think we, they have clinical importance for us as speech and language pathologists in our decision making uh, of the best therapy approach for remedial effects for people who stutter. Yeah, of course, yeah, you're right. Uh, the, that the cause of stuttering, of course, it has to do with the brain. Yeah. And you're familiar, you're working with dysarthria as well. Okay, and then it would not be too strange for you. Uh, yeah, you see the physiological theories believe that stuttering is caused by a temporary shortcoming in managing the complex coordination of movements required for stuttered speech. And the result in the stuttering event, and these groups of theories, you know, they are built upon the assumption that people who stutter have a reduced physiological capacity for coordination of speech. Yeah, okay. And some of those theories advocate that the cause of stuttering is due to a perceptual disability, 
Other such causes stuttering is merely a periphery motor deficiency. And you know that was a, a quotation from Zimmerman and others. Yeah, and other theories, they advocate that the cause of stuttering is defined within the cerebrum itself due to the lack of coordination between the two hemispheres. Yeah, and yeah, you know, the emotional stress, yes, uh, possibly a state of emotional stress precedes the stuttering event. And however, these groups of theories here that we are talking about, they attempt to provide physiological explanations to these phenomena. Yeah. Okay, and now to your question concerning this statement you heard, that the person who stutter, the right hemisphere should be more developed than the left, and that people stutter because that the right side should not be able to produce fluent speech. Okay, uh, yes, you see, probably this idea refers to the studies by Orton and Travis, and that was in 1928, you know, Many of the big studies in neurophysiology were actually done before the 1930s and nowadays. Yeah, and they formulated a theory where the cause of stuttering was due to an incompletely developed dominance of either hemisphere. And they built the, their assumptions at that time available data concerning the laterality of speech. Uh, that studies didn't show any differences between stutters and non-stutters. However, but later studies show that males with stutter seem to use their right hemisphere significantly more to process linguistic impressions than men do, do who do not stutter. Okay, but what they thought then, that the stutter then should occur because the linguistic processing, you know, in the right hemisphere doesn't have the same capacity as the left hemisphere for coordination of the various lengths necessary for production of sentences. Yeah, however, there are no sig significant proofs for such a statement. But at that time, it, it was important uh, as establishing the centralist theories of brain lateralization and stuttering. And uh, in some extent, it has influence of what we know today of the mechanism of stuttering. Yeah, 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 that's it, that, that uh, old theories get modern again, yeah. Okay, new research, yeah. But during the last 20 years, uh, within the development of neurophysiology of different clinical methods, such as the development from earlier blood flow measurements, you know, PET scanning of the brain, to the de development of brain activity mapping through the fMRI. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's now possible to study brain activity during performance of different complicated tasks, such as linguistic processing. Yeah, of course, yeah. And you have looked at some of these fMRI studies? No, that would be excellent for you to do, yeah. These more recent studies have made a breakthrough of a general view of the brain as a coordinating network where several parts are involved for the establishment of disruptions of fluency. And nowadays, there are more of the explanations of conjunction or coordination between different brain areas. Yeah, and of course, where some parts play a more important role than others for explaining the stuttering disorders. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would no, I would not fully agree that the cause of stuttering can be found in just one separate structure of the human brain, such as the right or the left hemisphere only, uh, or the nowadays, yeah, you heard that the popular basal ganglia, and they are talking about the dopamine disproductions, or yeah, and Zimmerman and those earlier peripheral studies, such as the coordination patches within the brain stem. Yeah. Yeah, and more interesting is to study the different loops, such as the articulatory loop and the conjunction between efferent motor planning and the efferent feedback systems to the cerebral cortex in conjunction with the midbrain functions. Yeah, and here you have the basal ganglia as well as the cerebellum and the brainstem and their implications for therapeutic approach. Yeah, because they are... Oh no, don't get confused. I think you can relate to this because you're working with dysartia, yes? Yeah. Oh yeah, see, yeah, in our education stuttering there was merely a therapeutic approach. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and the more the psychotherapy you see yeah but I think you know but why we are discussing the matter of the cause of stuttering in relation to brain functions you would be more helped by thinking dysartria and or aphasia rather than therapeutic approaches in stuttering for a while yeah that would come later on yeah yes I agree yeah, that we as therapists, we are not used to learn and talk about stuttering in this way. Yeah, but yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think we should, as it's mostly important for us clients and our ambitions as clinicians to pro provide evidence-based stuttering intervention. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you like, yeah, uh, the report from the internet, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and you like the part of neurology, yeah, and there is some old stuff. And of course we are again in the field of neurology. It happens that older studies or theories get modern again. And usually it happens because there are new heavy supports for it. Yeah, yeah, you know the new research methods, we have the fMRI and so on, yeah. Yeah, and now I think some studies pointed out as early as the Andro study in the 1982 and 83. Uh, and that was a study that was published during my last year in speech language pathology. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that reveals my age. Uh, but also the fact that there has not been any adaptation of current therapeutic approach to stuttering modification to research findings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a problem, but I, yeah, uh, yeah, but I am happy to hear that you like my report. Oh no, I have no answer to this, your question, uh, why it wasn't the part of the literature list. Now, I don't know, but you can ask your professor. And now we turn back to Andrews, because it's really interesting.